online. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the seminar of the astronomy department of IAG USP. And many thanks for joining us through our digital channels or if you are in person at the auditorium. And today we have the pleasure of having Dr. Giovanni Pareschi as a speaker. Many thanks, Giovanni, for accepting our invitation to be here today. Um, and so let me just give a brief introduction of, of, of Giovanni. Uh, he got his PhD degree from the University of Ferrara, and currently he's a director of research from the Italian National Institute of Astrophysics, ENAF. And he was the director of the Brera Observatory for several years. Uh, his area of focus is technological applications and development of instrumentation for space and ground-based telescopes, collaborating with the most important national and international institutions, such as ESO, ESA, NASA, among others. And today, Giovanni is going to present the Astro Mini Array to us and with his talk entitled The Astro Mini Array Gamma Ray Experiment at the Observatorio del Teide in Tenerife. And so before, I would ask everyone to turn, turn off your microphone and cameras during the presentation. The questions can be asked after the talk. And if you're following us through YouTube, you can write down your questions in the chat and I will ask the, the questions later. So Giovanni, please, whenever you feel ready, you can Yes. Share. So first of all, let, let me thank you and uh, the organizer. Uh, and uh, I'm so happy to give uh, this presentation, uh, uh, taking into account the long collaboration that we have with the, your institute. Uh, and I remind uh, um, uh, the, the, the time in which I visited uh, your institute a few years ago when uh, an important gamma ray school was organized. It was a great time for me. So now I will talk about uh, the Astrium in Array, uh, which is a project uh, with, which uh, uh, I'm leading now with the participation, you see, of uh, uh, important uh, international uh, uh, institute, institutes apart from our institute, the National Institute for Astrophysics in Italy. Uh, but also the Institute for Astrophysics in the Canary Islands uh, and uh, our uh, in, from the Telescopio Nazionale Galilei, but of course uh, with a very important participation of Brazil and uh, also other uh, international partners. Uh, the name Astri came from uh, a proposal by Nani Bignani, a very important uh, um, uh, gamma ray astronomer, uh, who unfortunately passed away a few years ago. He was a president of INAF. He was the discover, he, one of uh, the, 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 the researchers uh, who, for, uh, for example, studied uh, uh, the Geminga sources uh, and discovered the Geminga sources. And he was a very good inventor of names. And uh, Astri means ast in Italian astrophysics with mirror with Italian replication technologies. This is because uh, <coughs> we invented the. Uh, uh, about 15 years ago, a method, a very clever, I mean, method for making the mirror, for uh, uh, making the, the, the tiles uh, for uh, Cherenkov telescopes uh, is a non expensive method as it is uh, requested uh, for Cherenkov telescope, uh, which is based on a cold replication of glass uh, uh, sheets and that are uh, assembled together in sandwiches. And uh, this uh, method was uh, used uh, at the beginning for the magic uh, uh, Cherenkov telescope uh, in La Palma, Canary Islands, and now is uh, widely used uh, in particular also for uh, the CTA um, observatory, uh, which is uh, the next uh, biggest uh, Cherenkov observatory that is being uh, uh, realized. So, what is the other three project? The other project uh, is uh, as a poor purpose to realize, deploy, and operate uh, an array of uh, dual mirror wide field imager uh, uh, Cherenkov telescopes. Uh, they have of a four meter class. When I talk about wide field, it means about 10, 10 degrees uh, in uh, uh, field of view diameters. And it will be implemented uh, in Tenerife uh, in collaboration with the uh, ESA, but as I said, with the, um, the important participation of uh, also other institutes in Italy, but international institutes uh, like, uh, in particular, the University of Sao Paulo. 
and also the Northwest University in South Africa and the Université Observatoire de Genève. Uh, this is, uh, was conceived as a pathfinder uh, for the SST, Small Size Telescope uh, Array of CTA, that will be deployed in Chile. At the beginning, actually, was conceived as a sort of uh, seed for growing up uh, afterward uh, the big uh, array of uh, small telescopes uh, in Chile. But, um, I mean, our schedule was uh, too much advanced compared to the the one of uh, CTA, and in the end, it was decided to move uh, the mini array uh, to Tenerife. Let me remind uh, what the, the fact that uh, Brazil is contributing so much to ASTRI, and actually is, uh, uh, in particular, thanks to Bete uh, de Guevara d'Alpino uh, and uh, the, the, the colleagues at uh, the University of Sao Paulo and uh, the support of FAPESTI, supported us from the beginning and they, uh, they helped us uh, in uh, conceiving the project. Uh, they are giving an important cash contribution. They are participating directly in the implementation with a few engineers uh, who joined our group uh, in uh, Italy and uh, the Canary Islands uh, for the implementation of uh, subsystems. Uh, and of course, there is an important participation in the science definition group, uh, and we expect an important participation in the exploitation of the scientific data. This is, you see, is the main, uh, is the, let's say, uh, high level uh, uh, scheme of how are we are managing uh, the program. Uh, you see, uh, there is a, a here a project committee that which is in the end uh, is the, pro the the committee where uh, we decide uh, how to manage uh, uh, the scientific uh, um, coordination of uh, the observation and the development and uh, of course we have uh, um, participation of uh, co the colleagues contributing in particular uh, Bete is part of this committee uh, is an experiment, so we have a principal uh, investigator, is myself. We have, of course, a project manager, uh, Salvo Scuderi, a project scientist, Andrea Giuliani, and so on. And we have a user group, uh, Stefano Bercellone, which is also collecting uh, all the inputs uh, for, the, um, uh, for the management of the science. The uh, project was developed in two important steps. First of all, we are uh, we, we developed uh, uh, a prototype, uh, a prototype uh, in Sicily, on the slope uh, of the uh, uh, Etna volcano. Um, and why a uh, prototype? Uh, well, there are, we, we had a, a number of reasons. So, first of all, it was the first time that a dual mirror Cher Cherenkov telescope, uh, wide field, uh, was implemented with a completely new configuration never tested before. Um, and also a new kind of camera based on new silicon PM, uh, small side uh, sensor was developed. And an end-to-end -end, uh, telescope was developed for the first time in Italy. And uh, this was a prototype for the mini array, but also for the SST telescope that uh, will be implemented in, uh, in, in Chile, as I said. And uh, this was done uh, successfully and uh, was done in the past uh, few years. Uh, and uh, now the telescope is also st uh, working after uh, some time uh, taken for some refurbishment uh, and is taking data and we hope to have uh, some um, interesting uh, data taken before starting uh, the observation with a mini array also for setting up uh, at the best in the best way the observation configuration of the mini array. The mini array, as I said now, is, will be implemented at uh, the, Tan uh, the Canary Islands, uh, in Tenerife in particular, at the uh, astronomical site of uh, the observatory of uh, Teide, so another volcano. <laughs> volcano. Uh, you know, it's hosting a lot of uh, tel uh, telescopes, uh, uh, in particular solar telescopes. Uh, there is a big strip, uh, this ideal for our telescope that need uh, a big area because with our uh, large field of view, we wanted, we wanted to increase the distance uh, 
uh, among uh, the, reci the reciprocal distance among the telescopes. Right? Uh, we will discuss in a moment. So let me remind you, you are all astronomers uh, and uh, you are probably aware about the way how the Cherenkov uh, air telescope, uh, Cherenkov telescope are uh, working, uh, but let uh, just uh, to remind a few concepts. Uh, the Cherenkov after, uh, effect is uh, uh, based on light flashes uh, from uh, superluminar charger particles uh, in a transparent medium. It's a bluish, uh, 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 bluish uh, uh, light that we observed, uh, for example, uh, in the water pools uh, of uh, um, uh, nuclear, uh, in, in, in when the nuclear uh, energy is, uh, is produced. Uh, but this can be used also for observing gamma ray uh, sources uh, uh, from uh, our universe. Uh, uh, if you are able to catch uh, with a, a very uh, fast sampling of the order of a nanosecond scale, uh, the uh, fl uh, UV flashes coming from our uh, atmosphere when we observe uh, uh, the night sky. And uh, uh, in this way, we observe the, 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 the Cherenkov light emitted by relativistic showers. The showers are originated by gamma rays or uh, cosmic rays in pingings in, uh, on our uh, um, our uh, uh, atmosphere and uh, uh, with uh, some trick uh, we are able to separate uh, from uh, the hadronic uh, and the gamma ray showers so is if we have uh, a, a, an array and we of telescope uh, plus that the atmosphere can be used as a giant uh, galorimeter tracker and uh, it is incredible but thanks to the reconstruction that we can do we can do imaging so we can image the gamma ray source uh, emitting the gamma rays, uh, emitting uh, the, the gamma ray light uh, or with uh, an angular resolution, which is not too bad, uh, of just a few R minutes. So I have here a movie, I hope uh, uh, this was done by the MAGIC uh, collaboration, uh, uh, but to show the concept uh, in a pictorial way that I just discussed, uh, you see uh, the shower uh, which is uh, formed uh, when uh, a uh, relativistic uh, particle, astroparticle, impinges uh, on uh, the atmosphere at, uh, let's say, something like a few kilometers, 10 kilometers. Also, the flashes are imaged then by, uh, in a stereoscopic configuration by uh, the telescopes. So this is another way to see the same. So in general, this shower emit uh, in a cone um, of about uh, one degree in uh, uh, size, uh, angular size, uh, which correspond uh, if you have uh, uh, an event at 10 kilometers uh, to a pool of about 100 meters. And uh, same, if, if we sample uh, this, uh, I mean, the image in Cherenkov of this shower with just one telescope, we see this signal on the right. But of course, uh, if uh, we observe it with two or more telescopes, we observe. Uh, we have a, a stereoscopic effect and we can reconstruct uh, very well the direction of the shower and its uh, it shapes uh, and so on. And, can, and this can help a lot in discriminating uh, the origin of, uh, of uh, the shower. So if uh, due to a re relativistic uh, charged particle or a photon, so like a gamma ray. And uh, in practice, the, this is the method that is used for uh, making uh, um, gamma ray astronomy. Uh, actually, this method has been used widely um, after uh, the first Whipple detection uh, by experiments like MAGIC uh, or uh, Veritas of S. In this case, in the case of Astri, we would like uh, to explore the so-called uh, very high energy, uh, high um, gamma ray uh, energies. So while uh, uh, magic uh, S and Veritas are uh, exploring uh, the sky from uh, a few tens of GeV uh, photon energies uh, up to, let's say, a few tens of uh, TeVs. Uh, here we would like to go even uh, beyond, and in the sense to the fact that the very high energy events uh, have a tail, a vanishing tail, which extends uh, also beyond uh, this uh, pool of uh, 100 meters. And so, if we have a very 
uh, a wide field of view, we can increase uh, the collecting area for studying uh, the, the, the event. So for doing that, uh, we uh, decided to adopt uh, uh, a configuration uh, uh, which is uh, quite strange. It was a configuration called the, um, so firstly proposed by uh, Carla Schwartz. The Carl Schwartz was not uh, just a, a, a very a fantastic uh, physicist uh, and astrophysicist, but uh, he was also a, a very good astronomer and the telescope designer. And he proposed, first he proposed uh, this a planetic uh, uh, configuration based on the use of uh, two curved uh, uh, surfaces uh, uh, that uh, um, able to correct uh, the uh, from one side uh, to, 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 let's say, correct the, the off-axis uh, aberrations uh, and at the same time uh, to reduce uh, the uh, the um, the size of the of, of the focal spot. So the and uh, uh, the this this uh, uh, configuration was uh, uh, made uh, was uh, studied also by uh, Coudet in the 30th year of uh, the past century. Uh, but was never implemented in the end, but was discovered by Vladimir Vasiliev, professor at UCLA now, and uh, um, in particular for the application in the Cherenk of astronomy. Uh, the reduction of the place case uh, helps a lot in reducing uh, also the, the pixel size that we can use, and so instead of the classical photomultiplier used so far, we could use uh, uh, silicon PM sensors, so a very important innovation. Uh, based on this uh, concept, uh, it was designed uh, our telescope, uh, the Astro telescope. Uh, you see, this is the one uh, on the on the left uh, is the one that is uh, working uh, on the slope of the antenna mount. Where we, on the right is the, evol the evolution uh, that uh, of this design that uh, um, is being implemented uh, at the Canary Islands. It's a quite robust uh, structure. Uh, mm, as you, you can see, uh, the, the mirrors uh, are segmented and uh, are completely produced uh, in, in, in Italy. Some effort was done in uh, the production of uh, the secondary mirror, which is a planatic and is about uh, two meters in diameter. And this was done uh, by means of uh, not uh, slumping uh, technology, but uh, is a monolithic mirror. So just uh, for joking, uh, this is, uh, you know, now we are uh, receiving the fantastic result by from the giant web space telescope. You know that uh, these are uh, beryllium mirrors uh, with the cost of a few mega dollar per square meter. Also, our uh, our uh, uh, Astri telescope has a similar configuration, but just uh, the cost of our mirrors is much less, just uh, about 2.5 uh, kilo euros. <laughs> Uh, in, uh, in, in a difference, uh, with a very big difference in cost. But uh, we, we, are, we, we wanted to produce a very good science as well. These are some uh, uh, data about the optics. Uh, as I said, uh, this is, uh, we have used a modified Schwarzschild uh, uh, configuration, modified in the sense that in the end, uh, we have a fully polynomial uh, configuration uh, for designing both the secondary and the primary. Um, uh, this configuration, uh, in practice, uh, ensures, uh, as you see here, an almost constant uh, point spread function with the same angular resolution across a very big field of uh, five degrees in diameter. And uh, uh, the reflectivity uh, is optimized for working uh, in uh, the range between 300 and uh, six, uh, let's say 500 uh, nanometers, uh, where uh, we have the peak of the Cherenkov uh, emission. Okay, here you see uh, the uh, prime uh, one tile of the prime primary used for uh, for for uh, Astri and also the secondary mirror. And you see also the actuators. So the actuators uh, uh, have been developed in a, some clever way in order to be movable. In practice, we use a set of uh, actuators uh, for uh, 
uh, movable. Uh, we, in practice, uh, align uh, the mirror for uh, one telescope we dismount uh, the actuators and we use the set of actuators uh, for the next one. And this is the thing because uh, thanks to the very high robustness of our telescope, we can keep uh, the shape uh, for a long time. The camera also uh, has been developed in Italy with uh, the help of uh, also Brazilian uh, engineers. It's a camera based on silicon PMs. The silicon PMs are produced by Yamamatsu. They have a very relatively large size, 7 by 7 millimeters square. It's the largest silicon PM ever produced so far. They are grouped in uh, matrix, uh, matrices of uh, 8 uh, times uh, 8 pixels, uh, 37 matrices. And uh, we have adopted an innovative electronic for peak detection. These allow us uh, to reduce a lot of the, the number of data produced. Uh, and this is for sure a very important uh, advantage. We need uh, the use of an interferential uh, uh, filter in front of the camera because uh, these silicon PM sensors are sensitive also to the infrared. And the infrared is a big source of uh, background. And uh, um, with the help of this, uh, of this uh, filter, we reduce a lot uh, uh, the, this negative uh, effect. Okay, these are uh, uh, quite the uh, are some pictures of our telescope uh, at the Etna Mount. Uh, we learned how to, to, to work with an active uh, volcano. Uh, actually, it is a, a quite a, a difficult life, but uh, um, it helped also us to understand how, how to, um, I mean, uh, find the, the best setups. Uh, you see some images on uh, the upper part. Uh, the, the, for example, these are muons uh, on uh, the central figures, uh, the other. And, um, and uh, uh, we are also doing some experiments uh, of uh, muon radiography of the volcano in order to understand if we can uh, um, observe in advance some, any, any, any eruption in advance of the big uh, events. We have also an interesting feature of the camera, which is the fact that we have a second channel, which is able to uh, integrate instead of uh, uh, making uh, a fast sampling of the signal. And this allows us uh, uh, to take uh, images of the sky, at least for the br very bright sources, uh, and also the volcano, as you can see. Uh, this helps uh, a lot, for example, to understand if we have any misalignment uh, of the mirrors uh, or any strange uh, effect and also to measure the background. So with the, 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 the with this uh, uh, telescope, uh, we got two important results. Uh. So the first was uh, the validation of the Farsi Kudé configuration for the first time. So in practice, uh, you see on the left, on, on, on uh, this picture of the PSF, uh, that in practice we have the same PSF across the field of view of 10 degrees. This concept was, uh, uh, as I said, uh, suggested uh, at the beginning by Schwarzschild, uh, consolidated by uh, Coudé, but uh, in the end, uh, this uh, configuration was never been uh, constructed and demonstrated before, and uh, we have done that. And the second, on the right, uh, you see that uh, with this configuration and just one telescope, it was possible to detect uh, the Crab Nebula uh, at uh, a few TeV and beyond. And this uh, can be considered the first uh, detection of a gamma ray source uh, uh, with a dual mirror telescope. And this is uh, uh, a very important result that was obtained uh, a couple of years ago. So thanks to these uh, very promising results, uh, we started uh, the at this point, the implementation of the mini array. As I said, um, uh, the, it was a, a, for, for a long time, we considered the, the possibility to implement it in Chile as a sort of a pathfinder and seed for the small size telescope array of uh, the Cherenkov telescope array. But in the end, uh, the, there was a mismatch with our schedule, and we decided to anticipate uh, and uh, to implement it uh, at the Canary Islands. Uh, of course, uh, we did uh, some uh, site search study for doing that. Uh, you see here uh, a, uh, a scheme, how uh, it will work. We will return on that. But in practice, uh, 
uh, we are going uh, in uh, an astronomical uh, infrastructure already well developed, let's say, uh, with the possibility uh, to transfer the data every day to uh, Tenerife and from Tenerife to Italy, thanks uh, to a fast uh, pipe uh, connecting uh, the Canary Island to Europe. And this is a big advantage because, in practice, we are keeping all the data and uh, we will perform uh, just uh, offline uh, analysis and triggers uh, of, uh, of, of the data. What are the expected performance? Okay, here you see the energy uh, resolution and the angular resolution. In practice, uh, we will have an angular resolution. Um, beyond uh, uh, one uh, uh, TV, uh, which is uh, uh, in quite important, a few are minutes, as I said, and, angle, and uh, an energy resolution of the order of uh, uh, 10%, which is uh, important, it's a very, very performant. And uh, in particular, uh, if uh, uh, a two TV, we compare our performance to MAGIC, which is a classical Cherokee telescope, you see that we will have a field of view much larger. And this opens a fantastic opportunity to study in another way the gamma ray sky. Um, and uh, because uh, for the first time we can observe large portions uh, of uh, the sky with a good angular resolution. What is the the, the sensitivity, the flux sensitivity, compared to other uh, experiments, as I said, our experiment uh, is for studying the sky at high energy, very high energy, so beyond the 1 TV. The um, uh, experiment, uh, Cherenkov experiment developed so far, like S, Veritas and Magic, uh, have been conceived to study uh, the gamma ray sky in the, let's say, uh, in, in the region uh, of uh, less than one TV. So in our case, uh, we have a, a very good performance uh, uh, with, uh, um, uh, at, uh, at, uh, uh, you see, uh, after uh, uh, one TV, are the red dots. You see so superimposed also in this uh, uh, picture on the left, uh, the expected performance of CTA North, uh, and apparently uh, we are comparable, but uh, just after, uh, 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 say, 10, 10 uh, 20 TV, uh, we are maybe better. But the point is that uh, uh, CTA is an observatory, apart from that, it's very, it's very late uh, uh, compared to, to the Astemina array. But the point is that with the Astemina array, we can con focus our uh, uh, observations. Uh, on uh, uh, long uh, observation of just a few sources. So this is impossible with the CTA, which is an observatory. And uh, if we, you see, you can appreciate uh, on the right part uh, is that in this case, uh, uh, if we compare uh, Astemina array after 200 hours or 500 hours of observation uh, uh, of a given source uh, compared to the typical observation of CTA, which is uh, just 50 hours because it's an observatory, the, the, the sensitivity improves a lot. And really is a fantastic, uh, it becomes a fantastic instrument uh, to be used, uh, in particular in this moment, uh, where apart uh, from a magic vertex uh, and S, uh, uh, that are classical uh, Cherenkov telescope, we have an uh, experiment like Oak and Lazo and Tibet uh, AS Gamma, which have, uh, which uh, works in a completely different way. They are uh, um, typically water Cherenkov uh, telescopes uh, or scintillators uh, with a very good uh, uh, sensitivity, with a very good also capability of observing uh, large parts of the skies, but uh, with a uh, uh, quite worse uh, angular resolution and uh, energy resolution. So in practice now, LASO in particular, after work, is uh, achieving a fantastic result observing uh, sources uh, up to uh, a few PV in gamma rays, something uh, very unexpected. But uh, the experiment is not able to disentangle what are the real source uh, uh, of the, uh, those gamma rays uh, in large uh, fraction uh, of the sky, or uh, in uh, given uh, 
uh, areas of the sky were uh, very crowded. So we think that with the mini array, we can help a lot in doing, uh, in disentangling uh, the sources uh, and understanding uh, the real uh, uh, emitters of uh, those uh, very high energy gamma rays. And of course, if one understand uh, the origin of uh, those uh, very high energy gamma rays in practice, uh, understand uh, finally the real origin of uh, the cosmic rays, which are pretty related. So, <clears throat> the astro science, uh, we have, uh, for the astro science, we have uh, organized ourselves uh, in uh, science groups, also several uh, uh, colleagues in, in Brazil are participating, uh, actively participating in these uh, working groups, uh, and uh, uh, we, in practice, uh, uh, developed uh, uh, an idea of pillars, uh, so of uh, uh, astri uh, of uh, sources, uh, galactic and extragalactic, uh, that uh, will be observed uh, in the first uh, peer, four uh, year period of uh, observation of uh, the mini array, is what uh, we call a core core science. Uh, and uh, we have also we, we are also conceiving a sort of, a, of observatory science uh, that can be done afterwards. Uh, for example, in coordination with CTA. And uh, we have just published uh, these four papers, and uh, which are in the same uh, volume of the Journal of uh, High Energy Astrophysics. Uh, I guess a paper version is being prepared and will be distributed also uh, to the main uh, actors. Uh, this is uh, what I said before, the first uh, four years uh, uh, will be devoted uh, uh, to the uh, two main pillars, uh, so the origin of cosmic rays, uh, so observation of pavatrons, particle propagation, uh, 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 ultra high energy cosmic rays, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, and so on. While uh, uh, the pillar two is more related, if you want, to fundamental physics and extragalactic physics, uh, to the EBL, uh, bladers, hadrons, uh, uh, um, Axion-like uh, particles and Lorentz invariance violation. Um, these are examples. Uh, of course, uh, we don't have here uh, now a catalog of uh, these, uh, say, few sources. Uh, few sources means uh, something like uh, between uh, 10 and uh, 20 that will be observed during uh, the first uh, uh, four years of observation, where we will focus uh, our observation for several hours, so let's say, uh, at least uh, uh, w w uh, 100 uh, uh, hours of observation, but possibly more. Uh, for the Pillar 2, you see a number of well-known uh, galactic uh, sources, of course, uh, now uh, we will uh, uh, refine uh, this catalog, uh, taking into account uh, the observation uh, by LASO. The Pillar 2, we have uh, some well-known uh, extragalactic sources uh, that uh, um, will be observed uh, also for studying uh, effects like the Lorentz inversion violation, uh, uh, which uh, are expected to show something important uh, in, uh, in, in, in uh, the 1 TV, 100 TV, uh, range where uh, if uh, we observe uh, some kind of change, strange change of uh, the spectrum, uh, well, we can expect to really understanding better if the some Lorentz invariant violation effect is uh, in, in taking place. Okay, this is a very <laughs> important uh, table. It's the first release uh, of the LASO. Mm, uh, sources uh, observed uh, up to 1 PV, more or less. Uh, apart from the Crab Nebula, uh, there are a number of other sources. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, this uh, uh, is very important. Uh, let me say that uh, when we decided uh, to install uh, the Astrimine Array in Tenerife, there was uh, some uh, discussion, internal discussion. So why are you uh, are you installing uh, the mini array in the North Hemisphere if you think uh, that uh, uh, this kind of experiment will be in particular important uh, for studying uh, the galactic sources? So it would be better to, 
to install it uh, at the southern side, at the southern hemisphere. Well, we had in mind uh, the fact that LASO was becoming operational, and LASO indeed now is uh, delivering uh, number of uh, sources of server that are very high energy that are the ideal targets uh, for our uh, studies with the mini array and i can announce uh, also that we will have a uh, soon uh, we we are starting a synergy with lazo possibly we are uh, organizing some uh, uh, bilateral meetings uh, and um, and uh, to to work uh, in a sense uh, in uh, cooperation these are, we have an example, so you see here uh, some simulation, and this is uh, on the left, the 200, 200 hour simulation uh, uh, up to about 200 TeV of the region of the galactic source uh, J1908 uh, is a middle age uh, supernovae. You see as a uh, oak in the soul, so Lazo are observing now uh, with a very well, bad uh, angular resolution, you will see that uh, with the mini array we will be uh, able to, the, to observe uh, the real morphology of the region and to understand uh, uh, if uh, there are particular regions uh, in which we can, uh, we have uh, the emission of the high energy TV, uh, energy photons. The same is true for the famous genius region where we think that uh, we have pevatrons. Uh, uh, in the case of uh, <coughs> of uh, of our uh, observation, we can really observe a number of sources together, and uh, really to be able to disentangle uh, the, the the different sources. Giovanni, this yes, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's been 35 minutes. Oh, 35. Okay. Yeah. I'm. Oh, I, I have to speed up a bit, but I'm not. Uh, I, I'm. I'm trying to close. No problem. Yeah, you, okay. you still have Thank time. You. You Thank you a lot. Time. Okay. You're welcome. So I, I go fast here, but you understand that for uh, for sources like uh, J1908, uh, the fact of having a, a good angular resolution really uh, allow us to understand which part of the complex region where uh, possibly a pevatron is uh, in, in is included uh, is uh, uh, producing uh, the very high energy uh, gamma rays, and so where uh, the, the, the region where the uh, um, cosmic rays are uh, emitted. So I go fast, but you see that here we have a, a very good complementarity with, uh, with, uh, with uh, the uh, LASO and the uh, industry. Because uh, uh, Astri and LASO observe uh, two regions uh, with some complementarity, and, uh, with, but uh, Astri can add on uh, the very good angular resolution. Same is true for uh, the Chinus region, as I, ju I just discussed. Uh, we have uh, some uh, uh, the smoking gun of uh, some candidate sources so for uh, uh, to be pevatron emitters, but uh, I mean at the moment it's different, it's uh, difficult to understand uh, really the origin uh, if the, the, the hypothesis is correct. With us, we can do that thanks to the very good angle resolution and energy resolution. The crab, the crab uh, has been considered so far atomic electronic pevatrons, but uh, with LASO, maybe we have to change our mind because apparently in the PV, PEV region, uh, we have uh, an increase of uh, the flux again. So it could be that uh, the situation uh, is much more uh, complex uh, than we thought. And again, thanks uh, to the very good features of uh, the mineral, we can help uh, to understand uh, what uh, is going on. And finally, also, we, we are studying uh, uh, the way to implement, uh, 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 the way to observe uh, uh, target of opp opportunities, uh, like transient, like at Tangamari Bars, and you know that uh, we had these fantastic sources observed uh, uh, so recently by LASO, and uh, these sources should have been uh, observed by our mini array, uh, um, also with the moon, because uh, our sensors are uh, uh, not uh, sensitive to the to the moon. They have a, a very large uh, dynamic range. Uh, so we are trying to implement uh, a mode for observing at least the most powerful gamma ray bust. So we have a number of uh, strategies possible with magic uh, and uh, CTA North. Uh, 
and other uh, uh, experiments like Lazo and Oka, you already mentioned. And uh, concerning other wavelengths, uh, we have a really also already started uh, the um, contacts uh, for uh, uh, synergies uh, with other important facilities uh, that are being uh, uh, implemented uh, in other way, working in other wavelengths, uh, in particular MERCAT, uh, the Sardinia Radio Telescope, uh, and uh, a number of uh, optical telescopes and X ray telescopes. So, I already mentioned about the mineral operation. Uh, we are talking about four uh, year operation uh, on, uh, on a few targets, plus four years uh, on, let's say, observ observatory science. Uh, uh, we will run at the beginning as an experiment uh, and uh, uh, we will concentrate our observation time on a limited number of uh, programs uh, at the beginning. Uh, we will perform also some studies uh, of stellar intensity interferometry. Uh, this can be applied just to very brilliant uh, stars, uh, normal stars, uh, but uh, thanks to the large distances, about 170 meters on average, uh, uh, between uh, um, a telescope and S1, we can uh, achieve a fantastic uh, angular resolution using this uh, technique. Okay, we decided to go in Tenerife in, in uh, June 2019. Uh, this is uh, the picture of the signature um, uh, between the two presidents of FAINA ESA at that time, Niki D'Amico and Rafael Ribolo. Uh, we conceived the observation in some clever way that we don't uh, need a real-time analysis, so no trigger on uh, analogic trigger on site, uh, but we will transfer every day all the data in Italy. This is thanks to the small amount of data that is produced every year, and we have a data center in Rome. This uh, increases a lot uh, the uh, effi uh, efficiency, uh, detection efficiency, uh, of uh, uh, our system. This is a picture of the strip that is being uh, now used uh, uh, for implementing uh, the telescope. There's some picture when we started to explore and to define the sites of the, te of the telescopes. Uh, this is a map uh, in which you see the distribution. As I said, the reciprocal uh, distance uh, is uh, uh, about 170 meters. Uh, we started in June 2020 with the implementation of the first. Uh, in, the, uh, we, in late spring, we should uh, have a three telescope uh, implemented uh, and, uh, and then uh, start at least the operation with three telescopes. And after we, and, uh, we wanted to end up uh, in uh, 2025. Again, uh, this is another picture. Uh, we had to, <laughs> just to mention the fact that uh, we had to take uh, um, care of uh, using uh, the uh, uh, very uh, 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 reduced uh, uh, area around the telescope to preserve the nature and the vegetables uh, around the telescope. We are in a natural park. And uh, okay, this is a picture taken uh, about one year ago with the first foundation uh, digging. This is myself. Uh, and uh, these are rather picture until the implementation of the first foundation that uh, was uh, finished uh, in late spring of this year. In the meantime, uh, the first telescope uh, was being uh, uh, developed in Italy and, uh, and then transferred uh, to Tenerife and uh, in the end uh, mounted. And you see this is a picture of the first telescope uh, that is uh, uh, now in Tenerife. In summary, the Asti Minare will start a scientific observation. Uh, we are working hard for the start in 2025. Its uh, 10 uh, degrees field of view will allow us uh, to investigate uh, extended sources, uh, but also crowded fields uh, with a very good angular resolution. Also, the galactic center is visible from there for two months uh, per year. The angular resolution is quite good. It's just a uh, three year minute, uh, much better than uh, uh, other systems like LASO. And we have a, a very good uh, sensitivity up to 1 TV. So uh, we wanted to have a lot of fun. And of course, we wanted to, uh, to have a lot of fun also with uh, you guys in Brazil. 
who are uh, fully member of the experiment uh, and we hope uh, to cooperate with you uh, when uh, we will have uh, also uh, we are already cooperating uh, for uh, technical uh, activities but we would like to cooperate also for science uh, uh, in a very proactive way thank you great thank you thank you so much giovanni for this great talk very very complete um uh, okay it's open now for questions in the audience i don't know Reinaldo. yes uh, i i myself uh, i have a question but i think uh, elizabeth raised first her hands yeah we can start here so we will meet so Beth, you can ask your question Beth. otherwise uh I can start. Oh, sorry, sorry. Betty, your microphone is off. <laughs> oh, okay. It's good enough. So, hi, Giovanni. Can, can you hear me? Hi. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. I have two questions. Actually, <clears throat> When regards the <clears throat> the fact that of course you did not have the time. Oh, first of all, thanks for this nice overview, and um, it, you did not have the chance to to mention uh, quickly. And uh, um, I'd like uh, you to to make a few comments on the fact that the Astri structure will will be the one that will uh, provide the the seventy. SST small size telescopes for the CTA South. If you if you can comment on this on the schedule because you know we are we are on the schedule still on the schedule in, in spite of the of the of the pandemics and the world crisis economic crisis and and I wonder if you could say a few words on this. And the other uh, I have another uh, another question regarding science, but I can do this. I can make it after afterwards, if I may. <clears throat> okay, so I, I tried to mention just at the beginning, but of course, uh, mm -hmm. so uh, let me say, so the, the Astri project was conceived uh, from the beginning uh, together uh, to demonstrate uh, uh, the use of uh, this um, new configuration for making uh, the uh, CTA SSD array. So, you know, CTA is the big, um, I didn't mention, but uh, I just mentioned a bit, but it's a this big observatory, which is being implemented uh, at both uh, sites uh, in, the, uh, in uh, La Palma, Canary Islands, and, uh, and uh, in uh, uh, Chile, at, uh, in Paraná. And uh, of course, it will be the first Cherenkov uh, system uh, used uh, as an observatory. And uh, the, 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 we have a different uh, size of telescopes, uh, and uh, Italy and Brazil and in France, uh, um, and partially also some colleagues in UK and Germany, <coughs> uh, the development activities uh, in the development of these small telescopes uh, are small, but very important because there are many, and with a big field of view to observe the sky. Uh, in the region between one TV up to a few, one, uh, a few hundred uh, TVs. So after uh, an important harmonization process, uh, in the end, uh, our telescope uh, has been selected uh, and uh, will be developed uh, in Italy. We have in parallel another um, the project uh, is led by now. I, I was leading the project, but uh, now I have no time <laughs> because of the mini array, but it is being led by by uh, my colleagues uh, Giampiero Tagliaferri, and uh, uh, we are very happy to say that now we have a consortium. This consortium uh, uh, includes uh, many countries, but of course Brazil is part, uh, and uh, will provide the part uh, of the telescope, and is contributing a lot. Uh, and in any case, in practice, uh, the Astri mini array will be the pathfinder for this uh, mini array for this array. The array, as was mentioned by Bete, in, in, uh, will have a number of telescopes of up to 70, but at the moment, uh, we have already the money for providing 42 telescopes, which means really a huge, <laughs> a huge number. And as I said, now 
it's very important to run uh, the mini array at the northern side. We have uh, we will have a lot of fun also because of uh, the presence of uh, the uh, lasso experiment. So we can uh, really have a very good coordination. But of course, uh, the important science of this kind of array is the, the southern uh, side, and we expect a lot of fun there <laughs> when we will have the the set implemented. As I said before. Yeah, CTA is a bit late compared to the initial schedule. This is the reason why we decided to go at Tenerife with the mini array. But now, the ERIC, so the European Foundation that uh, will lead the implementation, is being uh, organized and implemented in 2023. And hopefully, uh, we will have soon also the, not hopefully, we have already, I mean, the financial uh, the, uh, uh, support for making uh, uh, CTA South and CTA North. So. Uh, I think it's very important to say that uh, with, with Astri, we are implementing the mini array, but uh, also we paved the way, we, we paved the road to the big uh, CTA SST array. Mm -hmm. um, uh, thanks, Giovanni. So I have a, another question regards, uh, regarding science. It's a science question. As you know, three weeks ago, there was this discovery, this detection by Lazo of this fantastic, very brilliant uh, gamma ray burst with a brilliance 10 times larger, bigger than expected. And this has caused, as you know, a lot of excitement in the high energy community. Why is that so? Because the source uh, apparently would be impossible to be observed at, at the distance that is produced. Z.15 or something like that. And then all this speculation has come out about, okay, either cosmology, we have to review the models of absorption of light, uh, extragalactic background light, or maybe the evidence of a signal of axioms, right? But because um, uh, LASO doesn't have, uh, you know, resolution enough to localize the source, all these things are essentially speculation. But do you believe that if Astromini Array was already built, we would have the means to, to define the source and this might mean a Nobel Prize, you know, because it would be the discovery of axioms if, it, if it's the case. So what is your comment well, on this? <clears throat> okay, first of all, I, I'll ask for, for I, I don't know, if we, <laughs> we, we, we will, I will be very happy if uh, an observation uh, with Astri will lead to, uh, 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 to a Nobel Prize. But of course, I can uh, be <laughs> open in any case uh, to have uh, the opportunity to study something uh, very strange, not only uh, actions uh, and uh, uh, EBL and so on, but for example, uh, the real origin of uh, cosmic rays. Yeah, okay. of course. Mm -hmm. okay. Which is another. Uh, but okay, it is a, a very interesting question because before this event, uh, we were discussing uh, how to observe the gamma ray burst mm -hmm. without disturbing uh, the, 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 the program uh, that we have uh, that uh, is focused uh, on a few sources. Mm -hmm. So the only way, so you know that there is uh, some uh, handler of the gamma ray burst uh, used, for example, uh, by, by magic currently by magic, by also other... Uh, mm -hmm. The point is that uh, if we uh, trigger each event of gamma ray burst event, uh, we, and we observe each one, we will lose uh, a lot of time uh, <laughs> uh, with uh, no detection. So, this is, uh, so what we are doing, trying to do, is uh, to implement a filter. So with, with this automatic handler. A filter, uh, we can't... Uh, rely on, on the spectra delivered by satellites. But for example, the flux uh, could be a very good uh, discriminant uh, for deciding if observing or not. Mm -hmm. And the other point uh, uh, is the fact that um, uh, we, we have to, 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 so far, we developed the, the uh, software in order to have a, a remote observation, but not an automatic uh, closed loop observation. We are trying to understand if we can evolve uh, without uh, um, a big uh, effort uh, to a semi-automatic uh, way to manage uh, the observation because we have to repoint uh, in a few, in, I mean, a few tens of seconds. 
<laughs> in this respect, now we just uh, issued a contract uh, with um, uh, the University of Santa Maria in Chile, right. it's a polytechnic university, which was expert of the Alma Common software, the software that is uh, used for controlling the mini array. And we are trying to understand if we can implant, implement uh, this uh, configuration. But I have a good, a good uh, uh, news, which is the fact that you know that the the, the this the gamma this event uh, was uh, happened during uh, 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 in the period in which we have uh, the, we we had the, the the moon shining, and it was not obvious to the point. Uh, also, magic had some problem in this respect because of uh, problem. While with our uh, camera, we uh, did the exercise uh, to a point, uh, even uh, a few days after the event, uh, but with still uh, the moon shining uh, with uh, the telescope in Sicily, and uh, we were able to repoint uh, without uh, uh, any problem of saturation. Right. This is a good point. <laughs> Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, Giovanni. I, I, I leave the floor to, to other questions, to the others. Thanks a lot. For very detailed answers. <clears throat> and, okay. and thanks for giving this nice, nice seminar, nice overview. <clears throat> yes, also, I would like to thank you, Giovanni. I myself I have a, a, a few very simple questions. In, in fact, it's some things I would like you to comment about. The first is, could you comment a little bit about uh, how is going to work the operation uh, uh, when the, the array is ready? Is going to be necessary, I don't know, the, the presence of people from collaboration very often? Are, is, there, uh, is there room for the participation of students uh, during this operation time? Okay, first of all, of course, uh, the students uh, are always very wel welcome. <laughs> if you want, also now, because we have uh, the telescope uh, in Sicily working and uh, we are obtaining very interesting results because, because it's the first time that uh, a telescope with a so huge uh, field of view is uh, used. And so we observe something very interesting, also the um, the, the way for making uh, the data analysis is different. Uh, so we are really having a lot of fun and uh, we are ready if you want to ask the student and uh, uh, they can work with our already with our telescope in Sicily. I think uh, it will be in any case very interesting for them. Concerning uh, the, the um, uh, operation at Tenerife, uh, this was one of the points because uh, um, at the beginning uh, uh, the mini array was uh, supposed to be a part of a CTA array. So the operation should have been managed by CTA. Now we are working as a standalone experiment, uh, and in particular, our institute was worried about that. So, from one side, another advantage uh, of being in uh, Tenerife is the fact that um, we have uh, as a support by ESA. And at the same time, uh, the support by our, uh, uh, the, you know, we have uh, our telescope, the telescope of the Natale Galilei, with a foundation uh, which is managing uh, it, uh, but is uh, supporting us. So, from a technical point of view, the idea is that uh, the, the telescope is just uh, one hour from uh, any city in Tenerife. Uh, so, they, it can be remotely um, uh, controlled. In case of any accident, uh, there is a, a, um, a people, uh, a permanent, a permanent staff of ESA at the site. And so, we can, in any case, uh, um, react in uh, less than one hour. Of course, uh, for uh, working so this is a big advantage of course because you don't need to be really at the site you can stay also um on uh, something that i neglected to say that now we have also a good uh, facility for uh, control room uh, the control room you hosted in one of these big uh, solar telescopes uh, the temis telescope uh, and so we are very well organized also from uh, this point of view but okay students uh, 
um, for sure could be hosted uh, in collaboration with the SA and could run. It, we don't need a big effort uh, taking into account that uh, they can, uh, for example, control the telescope from their own uh, house. And, uh, and this is the, the way that we wanted to adopt to keep the operational cost uh, as low as possible. Thank you very much. Another point I would like you to, to comment a little bit is that, uh, uh, so the collaboration envision 80 years of operation, I'd like you to comment on why 80 years and uh, is, is there possibility to extend the operation for the array? Well, uh, yes, it's like, uh, you know, uh, the space experiment. So at the moment, uh, we have an agreement for four years uh, that there is a renewable every four years. So at the moment, uh, simply, uh, we, we took into account uh, for eight years. Uh, but uh, if the telescope works uh, in a new way, we can extend uh, for, I mean, 20 or 25 or 30 years. And uh, the cost is quite negligible in the sense that uh, for us, uh, the cost now um, is doing the cost, I mean, is an opportunity because we have the opportunity to include the scientists of ESA in the group. And I guess this should be considered uh, an opportunity. We don't need to give uh, uh, observational time to Spain, but simply to have uh, scientists in our group. And uh, at the same time, uh, we, um, uh, the, the, the cost is, a, a say, something, but uh, plus uh, some uh, fellowships. So we pay in practice the fellowship at ESA. So if you want to be a return in terms of scientists, uh, you can also, also Brazilian uh, scientists can apply. Now, I guess there is an open position. I don't know if it's still open at ESA for the Astrimine array. Uh, so, I mean, for the moment we have first, we, we, we put a program of eight years, but can be extended. Uh, the idea probably is that after the fourth, uh, when CTN North we started to work, we should try to cooperate more with them. And uh, so we have to study the way. Right. Thank you. And if I understood correctly, after all the array is uh, working on the site, uh, for the targets for the first four years, the scientific program, the idea is to use the uh, all the array, the nine telescopes together for each targets at the same time, yes. right? Okay. Thank you. Yes, correct. Thank you. One question from Roberto. Uh, hello. Thanks for your seminar. Uh, I'm curious about the telescopes themselves. As far as I understood, uh, senior pictures, the telescopes will work at open air, they don't have domes and closures, right? In this case, how would they deal with severe weather conditions, strong winds, abrasion by dust particles or volcanic ashes, lightnings? How, how the project deals with this kind of problem? Well, you know, it's the philosophy of the Cherenkov telescopes. So in practice, uh, you have to increase a lot uh, the area uh, in order uh, to uh, catch photons. Uh, got, uh, catch photons, uh, um, if you want, uh, in very rapid flashes. <laughs> so, really. So, at the beginning, uh, the, the telescope, uh, mm, the first telescopes uh, were in practice uh, uh, solar concentrators. Uh, so, you are perfectly right. This is the, one of uh, the challenges of running the telescopes. Uh. But uh, after uh, several years of operation of magic, for example, we learned some tricks. So, for example, uh, one trick concerning the optical surface uh, is, uh, of course, uh, to protect it. Uh, indeed, it's not just uh, aluminum, but it's aluminum with uh, a layer, a protection layer. At the beginning, we used the CO2, but now we are using something uh, more performant. Uh, it is uh, funny, but you know, one of the problem is the dust that deposit on the mirrors. And you know, the way how we, in general, uh, uh, at the Canary Islands, uh, we overcome the problem is uh, since uh, in January, in general, we have a layer of ice 
which is, which is formed on the mirrors, and melting the ice this <laughs> helps to clean the mirrors. <laughs> so <laughs> after uh, in, we have uh, some statistics uh, with the magic. Uh, in magic, after uh, 15 years, uh, we lost uh, uh, about the 2% of reflectivity, which is very good. We have uh, the bad experience, if you want, of Etna. Uh, in it, uh, we, we understood, but in a second moment, that Etna is one of the main producer of fluoridic acid in the world, and in this case, uh, we had more, we have more problems. Okay, so I mean, I, uh, um, this is not easy, but okay. Uh, uh, we um, another point is to try to reduce uh, uh, as much as possible the number of electrical contacts. And uh, this is uh, why we will use movable actuators in our case um, for, 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 for that reason. But uh, you are perfectly right. This is uh, one of the problems. We, you know, uh, you try to, to do this exercise to ensure the maximum uh, uh, period of observation. Uh, and this uh, is done. Uh, we have, uh, for example, uh, um, some uh, uh, additional sets of mirror uh, and we uh, change, uh, we, we have uh, some maintenance program uh, every month. Uh, and of course, a maintenance program has to be adopted. We have uh, an additional number of cameras. So we don't have just nine cameras, uh, but 12 cameras. Uh, and uh, so we try to in improve, but uh, you know, it would be much better to have the dome, <laughs> but they will cost too much. Thank you. But so questions. I myself have some questions. I can ask my question while they see in the auditorium if there another question. I have a question concerning the uh, interferometry of of uh, uh, stars. How is this going to work? I mean, uh, how can you make interferometry with a Cherenkov telescope of, of a star? Can you comment on this, please? Yes, <clears throat> it is uh, used not as uh, the classical phase interferometry, but the intensity interferometry, the so-called uh, Embry Brown and Twist interferometry, that was studied uh, by Embry Brown, uh, a famous uh, UK scientist, uh, in the 60s and the 70s. Uh, and actually, you know, there was a, a, mm, an array of two telescopes in Socorro, Australia, that allowed uh, the measurement for the first time uh, of uh, uh, the 100, a catalog of 100 stars, so the, to measure the, the, the diameters. And in practice, uh, is a bit on a second order effect, uh, in which uh, in practice one uh, is served not uh, the phases, uh, but uh, the, uh, the, the, I mean, the effect of uh, coupling together the intensities uh, of the beams uh, is not effective uh, like uh, a phase interferometry. Uh, it goes uh, um, with the square root uh, of uh, the area of the telescopes in practice, and not linearly. But uh, uh, it's a very clever way, uh, and uh, not expensive, uh, to make interferometry. Uh, this uh, is being adopted also uh, in, I mean, uh, in a technique uh, which has been discovered recently, and has been proposed in particular for uh, uh, Cherenkov telescope, because uh, in practice, you can uh, obtain a very good angular resolution uh, even uh, using uh, bad resolution telescopes because uh, the resolution is given by the capability of a fast sampling of the signal. Fast uh, is uh, much faster than Cherenkov cameras. So while with Cherenkov we, we are doing the sampling at, uh, let's say, with a few nanometers, uh, we had to uh, make a sampling uh, with a fraction of nanometers. So at the beginning, uh, we started with the idea of using uh, the uh, Cherenkov camera itself for doing that, but it's almost impossible. So what we have uh, is to the use of an, uh, a switch arm uh, um, system to implement a small camera, a small camera, which a special camera, small camera, able to do that. So this is a good news that uh, we had, uh, is that we have also this project founded by our agency, 
uh, fully funded. Um, of course, uh, we will have a very good capability in terms of angular resolution, eh? a bad capability in terms of flux. Uh, so in practice, uh, really, we have a capability of uh, an angular resolution up to 50, 50 macro arc second uh, across several directions. So we, because we have a lot of uh, possible uh, um, beam lines, uh, uh, and so we can do really a 3D reconstruction. But of course, the, the targets are the very brilliant uh, stars. There are very brilliant stars that are, are in any case very interesting because, you know, in particular, the, we have these elongated the shapes uh, the, uh, due to the magnetic field. Uh, and uh, so, yes. So uh, also in this case, I think uh, we can do something good. There is a group in particular led at the observatory of Padova Inov. Also in this case, uh, if uh, anyone wanted to join this group uh, is very welcome. Okay, I understand now. Thank you very much. So you are using a different camera, a smaller than yes, one. Yes, a new camera with a switch arm, which uh, includes this camera. And mm -hmm. uh, so in this case, uh, the amount of data is still is a huge, eh? much more than the Cherenkov. But still, uh, we are able uh, to uh, make the um, analysis offline. Okay. So we record everything. Uh, we transfer in a few days, not just one night. Yes. And we make uh, offline uh, the analysis. And now we have a special uh, computing facility in Italy uh, that uh, should be able uh, uh, to manage uh, the um, analysis of the data. Um, so, yes. Uh, now, th this is something quite new because mm -hmm. it was not founded before. Mm -hmm. But uh, with uh, some uh, special funds, uh, due, I mean, related to the recovery after the pandemic in Italy, uh, we had uh, the possibility to fund also this uh, program. Wow, this is great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for your answer. So, Heinaldo, there in the auditorium, is there another yes. question? No. Uh, and now I think we can uh, finish because of the time. Uh, if there are more uh, questions, uh, I think people can uh, write uh, Giovanni. Yes, of course. Uh, so. Uh, I don't know. I can, uh, of course, leave my presentation to you, oh, and thank also you. with my, I mean, yeah. with my emails and uh, phone and so on. And of course, you are free to contact me. And uh, as I said, I will be very happy. I, I already visited your institute two times in yes. the last uh, ten years. I will be happy to return and also to have other uh, scientists. And for the moment, we had just right. engineers, but mm -hmm. scientists for long visits in Italy. Yeah, sure. oh, thank you. Very exciting yeah. <laughs> news. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank, so, thank, thank uh, you a lot, Giovanni, for, for the talk. I think uh, uh, it, it, we are very grateful <laughs> for, the, for the news okay. and for the exciting yeah, opportunities. <laughs> well, thank you for, for you for, uh, as I said, uh, Brazil has been the first big country supporting uh, Astri. And uh, so if you want, uh, this is due because uh, really uh, the reality. Okay, yeah. so thank you to you, to you to, to, to be part of this uh, collaboration. Yeah, okay. I, I, we hope to have you in person here. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. it will be my pleasure. <laughs> Back in Sao Paulo, yeah. yeah. Great, Giovanni, thank, thanks a lot. And uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, we keep okay. Bye, bye now. <laughs> yes. Bye. Bye-bye, thank you. Bye-bye, thank you. Bye, thank you. Yeah. Ok, todo mundo que esteja aqui pode descer no Coffee Break, que vai ser de lá do auditório. Eu tô com...